everybody, it's Mako. Um, I'm back again with another Q&A video. Video. And uh, first off, I want to thank so many of you out there for sending great messages to me. Um, I'd say like 99% of the messages I get have been extremely positive and so many people have been accepting and very much enjoying this Mako Radio <clears throat> series that I've been doing. Um, wanting more interviews, asking lots of questions, and I've actually gotten a lot of personal um, emails and messages uh, in regards to um, people saying how much they're enjoying it and have been following me for a while and like like being able to hear from me in a almost like pseudo non-fictional bio setting and and all the things that I've gone through in a personal way and how it actually relates a lot of people being able to relate to a lot of things that I've been through. So anyway, I wanted to say that because every once in a while you get someone who doesn't appreciate what I do. And uh, I'm just going to point someone out here just so that you can all see uh, when something like this happens and we can try to dissect their actual post here. So the post is, I'm going to go ahead and unsubscribe. Let me know if you ever start making videos. Well, thanks, Steve, for um, unsubscribing because um, you should, and I don't really want you here uh, if you uh, are going to act like a, a whiny little little kid. Um, you know, first of all, these are videos. So when you say ever start making videos, I think most people are like, well, that's exactly what this is. It may not be the video that you want, but this channel's for free. And it's too bad. Um, you're going to have to live with that. And if you don't want to live with that, unsubscribe. It's no loss to me. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Steve. Um, you know, and the second thing is, even if you were referring to videos other than my Mako radio um, series, uh, dude, I just released new stuff. I just did a new Ren Adams and Mako video, and I just did a Mako collection comic video two weeks ago. Hello, what are you doing? Huh? Anyway, um, so long and uh, good luck to you in some other life. So let's go on to the questions. Um, so the first one is, Mako, have you read the craft series by Max Gladstone? It's a fantasy series where the main protagonist uses a magical pool to TG themselves. It's very fun and avoids all sorts of cliches. All the female characters kick ass in it, and there are very few male characters. Um, I actually haven't read this series. In fact, you know, when you mentioned it, I didn't really know uh, what it was about, and so I kind of looked it up um, and saw that there was a number of books that have been made about this series, and it actually sounds quite interesting. Thanks for bringing it up. Um, you know, <laughs> in in uh, if I could clone myself several times. I could probably read it this week. I, but no, thank you very much for bringing it up. I think it's definitely one of those things I'll, I'll put on my, my list of many, many things to check out. I don't know if you guys saw Captain America, but he had that list of like all of these things he basically like had to check off of his list to check out like Nirvana was on there. And I feel like that's what I'm becoming. I'm becoming that person that's like, okay, look, I got it. Okay, wait, I got Craft Series by Max Gladstone. Okay, I've got Doctor Who. I've got... So anyway, yes, I, I will try when I can. But thank you very much for suggesting that. I haven't seen it. I mean, sorry, haven't read it. So next question, got one for you from Vincent. Yes, Vincent. Uh, I don't know. No, I don't think I've come across this in a transformation media. Every story seems to concentrate on either the social or identity issues of the transformation. Have you ever thought about the sensory issues? I mean, stuff like finding out you no longer like or even dislike certain foods, the variation and how you see differing, differing tactile sensations. That's awesome. And I 100% agree with you. Um, but I did do it. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, and I will, I will tell you the title that I did it from. It was actually Paradox Alice. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to watch it, Vincent, but, uh, it's that sci-fi, that little sci-fi movie I made a couple years ago. Um, and actually one of the things that I actually do in the film is I made sure that we had exactly what you're talking about. And there's actually some sensory things that are going on um, with after the transformation 
and um, Alex slash Alice Alice um, starting to discover new things about her, herself physically and one of them is like sense of smell uh, taste she actually eats fruit and she didn't like it before and now she likes it so because it tastes different she's colder um, she, 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 she actually says that a number of times in the movie. And so there's a lot of sensory things actually that are new that, um, I did in the film. And I think I kind of briefly touched on some of that stuff and other things, but not to the extent that I do in Paradox Alice. And some of that actually has to do with the real estate. There was just a lot more time for me to be able to explore and do that kind of stuff in a movie rather than in a comic or in a short kind of film or video or whatever you want to say. There you go. So next question. Hey, Mako, are you excited for the Oculus Rift? You know, I kind of am. Uh, I got to say that um, it could open up some avenues for a lot of us. Um, you know, Second Life for me uh, was kind of like a stepping stone of slightly kind of understanding what it might be like to be female and uh, using the Oculus Rift might actually just extend it that much more. I mean, I, you know, I've had a lot of conversations with people about virtual reality and how that could, um, you know, bring us into a whole new world of what it could be like um, wearing someone else's shoes. Um, there was a movie, Strange Days, that came out, I think, back in 1995 with Ray Fiennes. And um, that was a really interesting film for me because I think there was even a scene that was cut from the original movie, the original version of the movie that I saw, because I remember going to see it in the theaters, and there was a scene where there was a guy like wearing this thing, and he was basically like living back the memories of what it's like to be a young woman like taking a shower, and I remember that scene, and I, and it's funny because after the fact when it came out on video and see it on cable, it's I don't remember seeing it. It's as if like someone cut it out because maybe they got too much complaints that it looked like it was an old creepy man or an older creepy man you know, like fondling like a young girl or something like that. But uh, I remember that. And that kind of that kind of like brings up Oculus Rift for me and the things that, you know, could be done. Not that like you want to take a shower all the time kind of thing, but uh, just possibly the idea of living in, in someone else's shoes. And uh, I'm just starting to get introduced to Oculus Rift. Um, they are actually kind of introducing it here at the studio a little bit. So we'll see what happens. I'll try to fill you guys in the more I, I find out. Next question. Have you ever considered a parody on Carmen Rider with a TG theme? The main phrase of the series is Henshin, which translates to transform. Um, I actually had to look what this <laughs> I had to look up what this was. Um, and I'm kind of ashamed to not know about it because it's something that's really been around for a long time. I think since 1971. Uh, Carmen Rider. And it was a, it's a Japanese show, and it's actually been, I think it's still going on. Like it's it's a huge thing and it's a long running show uh, tv series they've made movies out of it um and from what i understand it's like it's one of the forefront uh, shows when it comes to the superhero action adventure kind of stuff that other shows have emulated since in japan so um i'll have to actually watch it uh sometime <laughs> after doctor who because all the doctor who people would be extremely mad at me if i didn't do that um because it actually sounds kind of interesting it could be something i mean let's face it like a lot of uh, gender transformation entertainment um, for some reason comes out of Japan. It just does. I mean, a lot of the stuff that I've followed, you know, and a lot of anime, manga kind of stuff. There is a lot of, like, TV shows, some movies and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting, huh? But I'll have to check that out when I can. Next question. What, in your opinion, is the root cause force behind the nonsensical taboo that is all too often attached to gender swaps in movies and TV shows? Keep up the good work, by the way. Um, I've kind of in a roundabout way answered this before, uh, and I think a lot of that just has to do with the way mainstream sees uh, gender swaps, gender changes, transgender, transsexuals. Um, unfortunately, we live in a world where, for the most part, if people see a guy becoming a woman or even dressing up as a woman, they laugh and they think it's funny. Um, a lot of times when they see a woman dress up as a guy, they don't really laugh. It's a double standard, I know, and it's, 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 it's incredibly frustrating. Um, I, I, I don't know what to say. I think guess women can get away with actually wearing, 
you know, guys clothes and acting more like tomboyish like uh, because but but guys like the very, very masculine guys, especially like for the mainstream audience, it's just it's just weird. It's like they feel uncomfortable about it. A lot of people. Um, and, uh, you know, that uh, it's 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 a shame, um, you know, it's mostly played out for comedy in in entertainment whether it's movies or tv and it's been actually a big pet peeve of mine for a very long time for those who know me um i really have a huge problem with most tg themed uh, gender swaps gender transformation material and ending up as comedies like a, a great example for me is uh dr jekyll and miss hyde which came out in 1995 with sean young um and you know quite frankly like obviously they had a budget um and some of the scenes, actually, the transformation scenes are actually fairly, fairly good. But the movie as a whole is just terrible. And so much of it just plays into really, really bad stereotypes. It's really, really awful comedy. I wouldn't even, I don't even know if I'd call it comedy. It's like they try to, they try to make it funny, but it's not. Um, and yeah, it's just kind of a shame. And, you know, there's that hot chick movie that came out. There's just so many things that, that end up being comedy. And I, and I've kind of stated before that when I've, actually screened my movies like the kiss the last piece standing even paradox alice in front of a very large audience we're talking like hundreds and hundreds of people inside a theater um even though this the transformation scenes are played out seriously in my stuff people laugh and it's just one of those things that no matter how hard i've tried I think the mainstream is just like they can't they don't want to deal with the seriousness of it they just think it's a it's a laugh it's funny um you know i think it's a lot of people it makes a lot of people uncomfortable and i think when people become very uncomfortable the first thing they have to do is laugh at it as if it's like oh this is a joke um and that's i know it's like hopefully i feel like we live in the dark ages when it comes to this kind of stuff and hopefully you know in the next 20 30 40 50 years it, it won't be that way. Um, and I'd like to see that happen. And that's a big reason why I'm doing what I'm doing is to try to like be more open and to talk about it because not enough people freaking talk about it. Right? Right. That's why we come here. That's why we chat. That's why we interview. Blah, blah, blah. All right, here we go. Next question. What video is the picture of Ren Adams and glasses with the red bra from? So, uh, CFA 1998, you are referring to a image button that I used on, um, a previous Q and a Mako radio show. Uh, and that basically was, it, I just lifted it straight from master and servant, which was the very first Mako and Ren Adams show that, uh, Ren and I made together last year. So that is literally just a, just a freeze frame of that because I think I was talking about why do I, someone asked me like, why do I make TG, you know, videos to begin with? So there you go. I just used it as a, this is one of the videos I have helped to make blah, blah, blah. All right. Next question. Hey Mako, have you ever thought of doing a mini movie cut into small episodes about a man understanding the lifestyle of being a woman after, after her transformed, he transformed into a woman when he insults a few women in a bar full of witches or gods. It sounds like you already have a story you want to tell, Hero Danny Phantom. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I have not thought of a story like that. Uh, it's an interesting one for sure. Uh, I guess, I mean, in some weird ways, like I kind of did something similar to it with Ren on the whole um, It's All Greek to Me short where uh, it's actually Aphrodite which I actually thought was like a really funny concept of like Aphrodite being a roommate with just a normal mortal human being, which to me was kind of just the, the, the idea of it was kind of just funny. Um, and she's obviously a, a goddess and zaps so-called roommate into, yeah, being, being a female. So, um, but as far as like making a movie and then cutting it into small episodes, that's kind of hard to do, I guess, unless you like you really, really map out and plan out the movie. I mean, the closest thing, really, if you think about it, it's the Hyde Syndrome. I kind of did something like that where, um, you know, Kim and I actually shot a lot of that in just a very short amount of time. And then I but we mapped it out like how it was going to play out and then just cut it into small little episodes that played out over like the course of 
what, like four or five months. So that's pretty close to it. Um, but no, I haven't thought about like actually taking a, like shooting a movie and doing that. Although I got to say also the other thing that's probably close to it is Paradox Alice 2, which is the comic uh, that I'm actually making right now. Um, that's a sequel to the movie Paradox Alice. And it's, it's similar in concept because really it's like I've already written the whole thing out. And as of right now, it's supposed to be 30 issues. Oh my God, I just gave that away, didn't I? But about 30 issues big, uh, which is going to take us about two to three years to make. And we just released issue six. So, like, we're, you know, they have to be chopped up in, in issues because as we go along, we can only produce, you know, the issues so much, you know, throughout the year because it's really only me, J.C. Grande, and uh, William, William uh, Dave Bogard that's actually making it, which is a very small crew compared to a lot of the other comics you get. So anyway, I'm rambling and let's go on to the next question. Have you ever thought about creating a story that has elements of fantasy TG and a realistic transgender transition? Hmm. Um, I guess in my own mind, I thought I was doing that with some of the stuff I was doing. Like, putting in a fantasy element to to um, jumpstart the transformation and then having a character deal with um, realistic transgender, you know, transitional moments. Um, again, Paradox Alice, I think, is a good, good example of that, perhaps. Um, but, yeah, I guess in my own mind, I thought I maybe I was, but if, I'm, if I haven't, then I'm glad you brought it up. Um, so maybe I have to relook into that uh, and into like, and, 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 and quite honestly, like I would probably have to sit down with someone who's actually gone through it, an actual transition and, and get better information from them, uh, which is another reason why I'm interviewing actually in some ways, I'm actually learning more. I mean, it's like, I know the interviews are great for you guys, but it's also a lot of it's for me because I think that, that we all have something to learn. We're always learning. We should never stop learning. And, um, I, I have so much more to learn. I don't, I don't claim I know it all. I'll never know it all. But, um, you know, I, 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 I'm like a sponge. I do want to learn stuff. And I think being able to talk to other people and interview people and, you know, especially people that have transitioned, um, it's such a great way for me to better understand what it's really like to transition. And, and maybe somehow I can, it influences me enough to somehow work that into some of the things that I do. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Um, so another question. Mako, have you ever heard of the game called Kingdom Hearts? Oh, yes, I have. I've never played it, though. But I know about it. Um, it's the one with all the Disney. Like They kind of like meld all the Disney characters into a game. And uh, I remember it coming out on the PlayStation 2, I think, first, right? Like in 2002. And then it got really big, like a lot. So many people were like, oh, I love this game. It's all the Disney characters. I can blah, 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 blah. Um, but I've never played it. Is it fun? You tell me. I don't know. Uh, yeah. All right, next question. Last question. Hi again, Mako. Does your family know about your gender issues? How much do they watch your work? Um, they, some of them know. Not everybody knows. Uh, like the, the people that are very, very, very close to me know. Um, and it's not something that we talk about like on a daily basis. Uh, it's something that might come up a couple times a month, and that's about it. Um, I think I've said before that uh, it's not it's not a conversation I usually instigate. Um, I usually like it to be you know whoever wants to start it starts it with me because I know it can be a very uncomfortable situation. I I could talk about it all day personally, um, but just because I can talk about it doesn't necessarily mean the person that I want to talk to is ready to to talk about it. And, um, I try to give everybody space, try to give everybody time to, to deal with it and to, to kind of come to grips with it on their own terms and come to me, um, rather than push myself all the time onto them, which then gets people to go, ah, run away. Um, if that makes any sense. And then do they watch your work? Yes. Yes. Um, some of them actually do. They've seen a lot of what I've done. Um, and hmm. They, they've told me they like it. Um, it definitely makes them curious about the stuff that I do. Uh, 
But yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Like a lot of times, like, you know, when they've seen the stuff that I make, um, they, they, they often talk about everything but <laughs> the TG nature of it. Ah, uh, yeah. So, um, and again, I just, it's one of those weird things. You can go back to an earlier question that, you know, I, I, I do actually empathize with people who just can't wrap their heads around um, the idea of people having a gender identity uh, issue because um, I, I kind of get it. I mean, I get it that there are, the majority of the people out there are perfectly fine with who they are gender wise. They're happy with who they are gender wise. They don't think twice about it. You know, the majority, the majority of the world, that's, that's the way they work. And, and to have other people around them that like think that they might be in the wrong body, um, you know, and, and they might not be the right gender, like really freaks people out because even though we don't want to do this, even though we say we don't want to do this, we all, almost all of us judge a person, um, basically by, by the cover, you know, we judge a book by the cover and it, it just makes us all more comfortable with like, you are clearly a guy, you are clearly a girl. And, um, yeah, I think that's, you know, it's a very simple black and white, black and white. And, uh, unfortunately for a lot of transgender people, it's not so black and white. We wish it, we wish it was, but it's not. Um, yeah, because we don't quite fit into the social norm of what our current society is used to. And again, 20, 30, 40, 50 years down the road, this may be a non-issue. Uh, people may not even like, the, the people will talk about it and go like, remember, <laughs> you remember the time a long time ago when people used to actually have a problem with gender dysphoria? Wow, that was weird. I just, wow, those people were really, really in the dark ages, weren't they? And uh, I kind of hope that's where it goes eventually and we can laugh about it. Hopefully it'll happen, you know, in our lifetimes where we can actually look back on it and go, you know, ah, uh, if only like, you know, all this stuff, like people accepted it a lot, a lot easier when we were, you know, um, younger. So anyway, that's it. Thanks again for the comments, um, for the questions. Please keep them civil. Be nice, please, as much as you can. I mean, you can be, you know, obviously like give feedback. You can, you can give criticism if you want, you know, just be civil about it. I mean, come on. Um, and hopefully I'll have a few more interviews coming up. Uh, and that's about it. I'll see you guys soon. And I do.